in closing out, the powerful, the significant letter, most significant letter to the Galatians, he says, Paul says, the Apostle Paul says something quite intriguing and potentially difficult. Intriguing and potentially difficult, somewhat enigmatic you might say. Mysterious? In verse 17, he says, From now on, let no one cause me trouble. Why? For I bear in my body the marks of Jesus. What in the world is that? You might say. What is Paul talking about? I bear in my body the marks of Jesus. What kind of marks is the Apostle Paul bearing that he may be, he's able to say this and say, let no one mess with me anymore. Well, you might be tempted to think that he's talking about what has been called stigmata. If you look it up on YouTube, you will find it. You will, it's been on the news before where people start to bleed in their hands, their feet, and their sides. And some people start to bleed in their forehead, especially during Easter or Lent season, or the, the season leading up to Easter. Yeah, stigmata, they would call it. These marks of Jesus. Did the, the Apostle Paul have stigmata? I don't think so. Certainly that's not what he's talking about here. It's not. How do you know what he's talking about here? Well, context, context, context. Just a couple of verses before it, okay? Just a couple of verses before this. Verse 14. Far be it from me to boast except in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. I will boast in this, that I have been identified with Jesus. I have been conformed to him before I am anything else. I am a Christian. And my life bears the marks to prove it. And as for all who walk by this rule, peace and mercy be upon them and upon the Israel of God. The Apostle Paul is speaking about his being identified with Jesus, his cross and his resurrection by grace. Throughout his ministry, throughout his testimony, all throughout, all shot through his teaching is the concept of being conformed to Jesus' cross and experiencing and living out resurrection power. In other words, living in the grace of God. Not the marks of legalism. That's the comparison. Not the marks of work salvation, of circumcision, but the marks of grace, the marks of love, the, evident, the evidence of costly, even painful, beautiful, cross-like fruit in a person's life. Ah, peace. In work salvation, there is no peace, there is no security, there is no assurance. In a life that lives by grace, in identity with Jesus' cross and resurrection, as physically painful as that may be, there is freedom, there is true joy, there is peace. He's carrying the contrast between work salvation and grace salvation to the very end of the letter. He says, look, you know, some people may say, well, grace salvation doesn't produce transformed lives. It doesn't produce people who are willing to give up their lives for God. I mean, if you tell people you got to give up your life, in order to attain salvation, in order to attain seven virgins after you die, then people will, be, will give up their lives. And, and some people did. 
Some people did. Now, now what do you say? Does your teaching of grace salvation produce that kind of change? Well, first of all, those people who believe that by their works of martyrdom that they're going to get seven virgins in heaven, are, are, they should be ready for a big letdown. Big letdown. And at the same time, yes. Many, many, many times over, yes. Salvation by grace alone produces transformed lives. People who are willing in the footsteps of their Lord and Savior Jesus to lay down their lives. Not from fear, not to work to attain salvation, but out of joy. And that, my friends, a life of dying to yourself every single day for the sake of love is compelling. And the Apostle Paul says, I bear those marks in my body. I'm being sold out from poor King Jesus because he is worth it. You, your marks of circumcision have nothing, have nothing to compare to the marks of love that God has given me, granted me to bear. Don't mess with me. I love it. And don't mess with the gospel, the good news, which is truly good news, of salvation by faith alone that produces works. Faith that results in a salvation that is accompanied by a lovingly, joyfully transformed life. Ah! Work salvation has nothing to compare to this. Heavenly Father, on the surface level, it could look the same. A suicide bomber and a person who is willing to give up his or her life for King Jesus. But one is done out of sense of pride, even a sense of fear. But Lord, the similar act is done by believers out of joy and love as you taught us and you taught us by example for the joy that was set before you, you endured the cross. Lord, joyfully then, help us to pick up our cross after you every single day because you are worth it. Help us to be patient with others. Help us to be patient with ourselves and help us to serve you the way that you have served us out of joy. Holy Spirit, fuel this gospel salvation. Help us never to compromise it. Help us not to use the easy way out, the back door of work salvation. Help us never to fall into that pattern, even fall into that pattern of thinking. Help us to insist upon, leaning upon your grace alone every single day for being saved, for growing in that salvation and for meeting you face to face. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. The sun cannot compare to the glory of your love. There is no shadow No mortal man would dare to stand before your throne, before the Holy One of Heaven. It's only by your blood, and it's only through your mercy, Lord, I come. May you receive the honor that you're due. Oh Lord, I bring an offering to you. 
Oh Lord, I bring an offering. 